Hey, are you interested in getting Riverside FM because you're wondering if it's going to be a better tool for you when you're doing your podcast interviews or YouTube interviews? Are you also wondering, like, is it really that much better than Zoom or Google Meet or the other options out there? In this video, what I want to do is show you a behind the scenes look at Riverside FM, but actually show you a case study of me doing it versus Zoom and how it worked out. And if you stay at the end of this video, I'm going to give you tips on how to shoot better quality video if you're using Riverside FM or even Zoom or another competitor. And then also how to get more reach on YouTube if that's where you're posting some of your videos to because that is what I do for a living. I am a YouTube consultant. But what we're going to do is jump into Riverside. I want to show you exactly how the tool works and also show you some side by sides and some cool features that it has. All right, let's jump into it. If you were to look at this article here on Riverside site, they're showing Riverside versus Zoom and the differences, and they're showing how a cloud recording is different from a local recording. But a lot of times you see this stuff and you're like, well, it's marketing. Is it true? So when I did a, um, a video on Zoom, uh, let me pull this up for you. Uh, this is what my head looked like. <laughs> uh, I laugh because not great, right? Um, but you can just kind of see there's a lot of like distortion, like even like on the on that beautiful dome right there. Uh, but just the colors, everything. And that's just not a very flattering um, look. And this guy is Ryan right here is somebody who I was interviewing. And it was a real bummer because the reason that this came out so poorly is it's a cloud recording. It ended up being re recorded in a resolution that was way too small. So here is what the resolution looked like when I recorded on Riverside FM. So one of the things you'll notice in this video here, it's all side by side. But one of the things that I love about Riverside FM is you get a lot of options of how you wanna export your actual tracks. All right, so why don't we actually jump into a studio? I just created one here, I called it ABC Studio. You can do that pretty easily just by creating a new studio. Um, and you know what, why not? This one will be XY, or uh, we'll do XYZ Studio. All right, so you do audio and video, uh, because that's what I wanna do for this, and then enter studio. So one of the first questions it asks you is, are you using headphones or not? Because this is gonna help it uh, determine whether or not how the echo works. And we're gonna get into that in a little bit, because there's a setting that you can actually toggle if you're having echo from your guest on the podcast. So I'm gonna say I'm not using headphones, because I currently don't have a headphone in. So what you can see here is some of this will look familiar, right? You can record here, you have your mic options, you have your camera options. Um, I do recommend if you do have an iPhone, uh, way better. Uh, so what you're seeing here, this is the, um, the camera on my MacBook. All right. And this is a brand new MacBook in 2022. If I was to go to the Logitech, you know, you can kind of see my iPhone is up here, but you can kind of get a qual an idea of the quality here. There's a little bit of noise around me. And then now if I go to the iPhone, you can see this is really great quality. So iPhone with Riverside FM is by far the best thing I've found if you're not getting into like DSLR cameras and crazy rig setups. Uh, so um, you can also share your screen. So if you're looking at sharing different screens here, you can do that. Um, but here's some of the stuff that's really cool. So um, you can do noise reduction for all uh, if you wanna turn that on, all right? One thing I like here is you can see the audio waves as you're recording. So if you were to invite somebody into the studio, here's how you'd want to do it. This is pretty cool. You can decide if they want to be an audience member so they can just watch. They can be a guest or a producer because I'm the host and there's only one host. In this particular case, I would do a guest. And when they actually come into the room, you're going to be able to see their audio waves as well. This is something I really like because at least from my understanding on Zoom, uh, I could see my own audio waves, but I could never see the other person. So it gives you a good idea there. The echo cancellation, this is important. Turn this on if you're not wearing headphones for best quality audio, uh, wear headphones. So you can also tell the person to go in and they can turn on echo cancellation as well. Uh, this is pretty cool. Um, you can do stuff like clapping. Um, I don't know how well you'll be able to hear that because it's far away from my microphone. So if you wanna just you know, have some fun with that, that's stuff that you can put live into uh, your studio, into your broadcast. But the thing I would say with that is your guest is not going to hear that sound effect. It is going to make its way into the recording, but they're not going to hear it. Uh, and then you have chat as well um, if you're working through something. So why don't I just do like a quick record because I want to show you how you have different options when you're actually exporting it because that gets pretty cool as well. So right now uh, they do a countdown, which is nice, kind of a nice feature for especially your guest. So they can get going right away. Um, so right now uh, it does tell you actual recording is higher quality. Good thing to know. Um, when I was interviewing somebody, it did look pixelated at certain points. The final uh, recording was more than fine, though. So you can also, as you're going live on here, let me um, pull this up so we don't pull up that uh, bottom there. You can mark the clips. 
So this is really great if there's just certain things that happen during the recording, right? So you're like, oh, that might be a great like YouTube short, or that might be something where if I'm putting this on YouTube, I wanna make that a chapter marker, right? Uh, it makes your editing so much easier if you're doing these things um, during the recording. Uh, in my particular case, I was actually recording a YouTube playlist and I was doing it all in one interview. And I'm actually gonna link to that interview at the end of this so you can see how the final uh, video turns out. So I'm gonna stop recording this. And then what I wanna do is I, I wanna go to um, the recording itself. So your audio and video have been recorded on your computer. It still needs to be uploaded to Riverside. Now you can see it's upload complete. So that happened pretty quickly because it's a short recording. Um, if you're looking at exporting a recording that's really long, especially if you're shooting in 4K, uh, it's gonna take probably an hour or so before you get that. Um, but you can close this page now. So why don't we leave this? And then what we're gonna do is take a look at the actual studio session. So right now it's processing all participants and Eric Worrell, um, my name there. And then you have the markers on here. So you can see those easily too. And then what you would do is if I want all participants, it's processing, you'd have to do a high quality and then you choose the layout for export. So if you're doing you know, YouTube shorts, reels, you can do it this way. You can do a post, which is great for social or full length. So you can see how cool that is that you're able to do that. So they're still processing this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it a second. You can see right now it's 9, 10 a.m. I'm just curious how long it's gonna take because there is some cool functionality that you get when you actually export the file itself. Okay, now it is 9, 11 a.m. So it only took a minute and you can see that it's done here. Um, I did wanna make mention too, this is nice that you can create a uh, shareable link. So if you have a team that's editing this for you, you can give them the link. Uh, but in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna download a high quality of all participants, which unfortunately is just me, but I wanna show you some of the settings that you have here. Um, so you can do some pretty cool stuff. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna look at the tracks, all right? So you can decide, and I wish I had this set up. Let me go actually back and see if I can show you this in the interview uh, with Ryan, because this is really important. Uh, let's see, we're gonna click here, and then I believe it was this one, where I can view recordings, all right? And then if I go into the recording itself, you can see here, this is where, um, when I did an interview, I got three recordings. You have all participants, you have just Ryan, and you have just Eric. So these are shot in 1920. So these uh, two right here are uh, uh, 1080p, I should say. Uh, and then if you're downloading this, let me see if it gives me the option still. Choose layout for export. I'm gonna do full length. And yeah, I wanted to show you this because with the tracks, this is really cool. Uh, you can actually uh, drag to reorder. That is huge because it's like, Sometimes like if you're the host, maybe you want to be on the left side, maybe I'm a psycho, uh, but I want to be able to have that option. And again, the quality here is uh, showing it like this. A lot of times the preview quality is not as good as the final export. This is the final export that you're seeing there, which looks great. Um, doesn't look as good as the preview, but you can actually do some live editing down here uh, and be able to do that. Um, I don't remember, yeah, use audio only if you wanted to. You know, if you want to pull somebody out, you can do that. Uh, but then the size you can change and then the layout, um, let's see what we can do here. So if you want just solid like this, or if you want to have the little bit of a border, you can do that. Um, and then you can actually change the background of the border. So you can do stuff like this. So for me, I actually like um, the fact that you can just put them, smash them together like this, but you can do all sorts of stuff and you can be able to change it on the fly. So why don't we leave it like this? So in this case, you would just click export. But this is really cool too. You can normalize audio levels. Depending on how into the weeds you wanna get, yes, you could have a sound engineer that comes in, goes through both tracks, and they normalize it so that if my audio was significantly higher than Ryan's, um, what it would do is it would actually pull our audio so that they're in a very similar range. Uh, remove background noise, remove um, uh, watermark, and normalize audio. And then, because this was shot on 4K, I can export that in 4K quality, which you can't do with Zoom. I did look into Google Meet because I do like Google's products, but it was incredibly limited. Like in my opinion, it was like Google Meet's functions and features, then it was Zoom, and then another level up that from there was Riverside FM. So one thing I should mention too is I do have a link in the description of this video. It is an affiliate link, um, but I wanna earn that click. Uh, and I don't think I've done that yet. So what I wanna do in this video at the end is I'm gonna show you how to get the best quality by using your iPhone. And it's gonna be a really quick tutorial couple things that I just want to be able to show you that's going to make it a lot easier for you. Um, this is probably going to be tough to see. I'm going to put a link to this, but this is just like a $20 ring light, maybe even less than that. 
um, really great for um, the quality of your, uh, your uh, videos. So what I wanna do is just make myself full screen right now. If I turn this off, this is what you're seeing, right? Now, if I turn it back on, this is what you're seeing. And this particular ring light allows you to kind of just uh, filter or uh, cycle through different color temperatures as well. So now getting back to this, I just wanted to go over a few other items here. So what I would recommend if you're doing a video is you wanna re-engage the viewer as much as possible. If you look at the really professional setups where they're in the same room, you know, you're going on those huge podcasts, what they have is they have like five cameras set up and they're constantly moving the camera angle around because that re-engages the viewer, right? It's a pattern interrupt is what it's called. So on this, what you can do is this allows you to download three separate tracks. So I could have just Ryan, just me, and both participants. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to the actual interview with him on how to sell an Amazon FBA business because I'm picking his brain because he's an expert in that field. Uh, but what it's going to do is it's going to re-engage the uh, viewer constantly because I'm able to go me full screen, Ryan full screen, us side by side, text on screen, and things moving around throughout the video that Zoom makes it really hard to be able to do that. Uh, just really cool that you can do that stuff. So uh, the one thing that's kind of new to me is I haven't actually looked at this yet. I was curious what the um, recordings look like. So if I click on this one, I believe I have the clips. So if you remember, I did the markers, right? I did a marker at um, 20 seconds and a marker at 36 seconds. So what I wanna do is preview that and just see what that looks like. So you can see this is at the 30, uh, 20 second marker, right? Okay, and then uh, if we go back, I wanna just see what this one looks like. So what you can see there is when you do those markers, it's actually gonna create clips at the beginning of things. So this would be super helpful if you're, like a podcast is probably just a conversation that's gonna run. But if you're doing a structured interview where you're like, we're gonna do these six things and we're gonna take breaks in between it, then what you can do is you can clip and you can do those marks and be able to make it very easy for yourself to be able to download those videos and know exactly when they start. Uh, let's get into the settings a little bit more just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Um, but you can name the studio, security type, you know, private, public, schedule the studio, inviting participants, super easy, um, very easy to do. You can add it just like you would like, all right, invite studio. You can do the guest, like I said, audience producer. Um, the producer is a nice feature too. So if you have a big enough, you know, uh, thing that you're doing, like you have a podcast, or whatever it is, you can have a producer that's going to actually be able to normalize the audio, be able to view everything, be able to change things up. So you can just go on and just actually do what you do. And that's host this interview. Um, and then if you want to just uh, send them a direct invite, you can do it via email there as well. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about too, because I mentioned it earlier, well, you can live stream. Uh, I don't do a lot of that, um, but you can do a bunch of that on here as well. Um, and then integrations with Dropbox, which is super helpful for just for file storage management outside of Riverside FM. Um, but I was mentioning that the iPhone is a great way to do these interviews. Um, I have an iPhone 14 right here. Um, I think it's the Pro. Uh, but what you can do with that is you can open up, if you have an uh, uh, Apple, is I can go in here and I can actually change the lighting. So if you look at me right now, the lighting's not quite as good. I can put on studio light. I can put on portrait. Very easy to do. Um, the, the little trick though that I'm going to give you right here is sometimes it's hard for different tools and services to actually be able to recognize the iPhone. So the thing that always works well for me is I would go to QuickTime, which is built into Mac, and then open that up. And then on QuickTime, I would do file new movie recording. And for whatever reason, QuickTime, um, which you can see I am right here, you would click right here and then it's already got the iPhone but it seems to be able to pull up the iPhone quicker and then get it to um, actually be recognized so that then when you're inside of Riverside FM, it's easier for it that when you're doing a new studio and a new setup that you'll be able to select that as your camera. Um, so I'm very impressed so far with using the service uh, and I'd highly recommend it if you are somebody who is looking to grow on YouTube. Um, I'll give you a couple quick um, recommendations too if you are looking at putting content on YouTube. Uh, one of the things that I believe has blown up Joe Rogan's podcast because he's the number one podcast on Spotify is he has two different channels. He has Joe Rogan's, you know, two hour long podcast and then he has Joe Rogan clips. And what those are are just like we were talking about earlier, like how you can mark the video because there's certain things that might make for a good um, intro um, or a, like a good bite sized clip. Right. So why don't we go to YouTube and take a look at that? Because this is something I think that's going to help you out quite a bit. So I'm going to show whether you love them or hate them, you know, I'm kind of 
you know, on the fence with him sometimes. So you have the powerful Joe Rogan, right? This is that. Um, and if you go on here, you can do uh, search for just channels. And then you have Joe Rogan Clips, which also has 6 million subscribers. So the reason that these are really powerful is a lot of these videos will show up in search. So uh, Joe Rogan, why obese people can't lose weight. So I bet you why obese people can't lose weight. And I'm doing this on the fly. Like I wanted to be able to just show you like this is something that shows up. So there you go. This particular clip, because it's only seven minutes long and answers this query that people have, is showing up on the first page of Google. So if you're looking at doing this, that uh, a strategy that works really well is try to take those little clips out of your interviews and your podcast and make those like, you know, those digestible four to five minute things that answer a specific question. Another cool tool that I wanted to make you aware of is one called videosnap.io. Um, this will actually turn your talks into shareable videos. So using AI, it'll take a look at your long podcast and be able to slice it up into shorts. So this is definitely something that you'd want to check out as well. All right, guys, thank you for watching the video. Again, in the description below, you will find uh, a link to Riverside FM that is an affiliate link. I appreciate you using it. You still get the best possible price, but I may receive a commission when you use that link. Now, on the screen here is the actual interview that I did with Ryan. So if you want to check out what the final product looked like when I run it through an editor and you can see the camera ch angles changing, go ahead and check that out and I'll catch you in that next video.